Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Deborah Gilbert, and thank you, BNH, for receiving me. I really appreciate it. I'm very excited to talk to, to you in this um, extraordinary place that we all know, the photographers, and we like to, to come. And there is always something we want and we need from here. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you have any question um, about technical aspect of the book, but about the story of the book, please let's make the question at the end. Uh, like that, I will uh, show you few pictures that I like in the book, and um, we'll, we'll talk about that after. All right, so I arrived uh, in the United States in April 1965. I was already a photojournalist, but not well known. I just finished the Algerian War, for the people who remember, in 1962 to 1965. I had some difficulty over there, and I arrived in New York. And in New York, what's happened in 65, that was Selma, Alabama. But I did not have the money to go over there, so I was a little bit frustrated. And um, for three or four times, or four years, uh, I work alone. I try to be a photojournalist, to find uh, 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 an agency in Europe to support me, to sponsor me, to pay my expenses. And it happened. And uh, the first day was the first. The first years were very difficult. Why did the, uh, we do this book with uh, with my wife? Is because um, I I'm still represented by Corbis to sell my my work, my career. But we realized that we better have the analog uh, next to me, the archive next to uh, my wife, who is an editor and a very good one. I'm lucky, and uh, we scan the pictures and uh, we have the picture now in digital form and we did this book which is the first probably, probably of a series of a book it's my work only in the united states but in 1975 to 1985 i work more outside of united states and more in asia more in africa uh, more in russia more in china uh, but we decided that this book is only my work in the uh, United States. Well, starting this, let's see pictures. When I arrived in New York, uh, you can see the picture on the left. Um, I was so excited to see New York. I just wanted to come in the United States. My uh, father fought in the US Army during the World War II, so for me, America was a country of hero that was really, you know, it was absolutely extraordinary adventure for me to come in the U.S. But unfortunately, I very quickly understood that New York is also, also on the right side of this picture. And uh, matter of fact, in 66, 67, we had a lot of difficulty with the sanitation department in this country, in this city to collect the, the abandoned car in the Bronx, in uh, Peter Stevenson, in the mini area. And the garbage was difficult to collect because the people in the ghetto was just throwing their garbage out of the window in the, in the, in the courtyard. And the, the kids were working and playing on the abandoned car. This is a beautiful a Plymouth uh, abandoned there. And this is the, in Fox Street in 1966. And time to time, and I was with the sanitation department in their truck, they have a loudspeaker, and said, OK, we are there. Please, people, come down. Come down with the kid. Try to clean the, uh, the, the courtyard. And this is one of these days. And the kid had a good day. And I was on, in Harlem here. I was uh, on the truck. I am on the platform of a truck. And behind me, it's uh, the jazz mobile. It was an orchestra all the summer, going on Saturday and Sunday night slowly. And it was really lovely with an orchestra of volunteer people playing jazz. 
and all the kids were walking. Uh, this is a 50 millimeter Leica, cannot be better. I was very happy to be in Harlem that, well, that way. This is for Washington, and during the Depression, we are 70 already here. And 76, we jump quickly, um, but I will go back in the 60s soon. Uh, 76, the, the, the towers were finished, but nobody wanted to rent because uh, there was no subway yet, no restaurants, no parking, and uh, only the FBI and the US Custom, if you remember, uh, were on South Tower on the four or five floor. That was like that with the West Side Highway, not demolished yet. It was really a dramatic uh, area. Beautiful in one way and awful the other one. That's my first story. It was in 67. I was working um, in the summer in the, the dark room um, on the West 66 with Peter Bash and Philip Halsman, photographer. I was doing their print and finishing uh, working. I went in the street and it was two guys, obviously gay, said, hey, you want to take a picture of me? I had the Leica around the neck. I said, sure. So I took a picture of them. You will see the couple later. And uh, I came back the next day with a print. And I lived in this building for a couple of days and I photographed those homosexual. They were prostitutes just in front of what it is today, the Lincoln Center, which was already under construction in 67, in the 66, 67 when I came. And uh, they were prostitutes there from 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. And uh, during the day, they were playing with their doll. They were women. And they have their community. And then I, this is a couple on the right who asked me to take a picture of them. And then I did a fashion show on the roof. And I never published that story. And then my wife found the story two years ago in my contact sheet. And we put it in the book. Here in the park on the left. And on the right, that was 42nd Street, if you remember how it was at that time. Overdose, strange people at night, the cops everywhere. In 72, I read a story about the, the gang in the, in the Bronx. And I was fascinated by the Savage Skull because they were a lot of very courageous in a way. Uh, they were pushing the, the, the drug dealer, the heroin drug dealer, the hard drugs, out of their territory. So they have about six, seven, eight blocks, and nobody could approach uh, uh, without talking to the Savage Skull. And to take pictures, I become friend with them, and I spend a few days with them. So it looks like, uh, if you remember West Side Story, so this is their, their playground, play around with. All the time fighting. They did not speak English, they, they were the Spanish speaking uh, gang. And now in September, I'm going to have this an exhibit on, only on the Savage Skull in, uh, in London. In 72, you remember maybe the old, older person here that the Tom prison was a prison under the, the justice, the court justice, for people waiting their sentence or the beginning of their trial. And the, they started the first program of the Metadon. So this is why I came into prison to photograph the Metadon program. But I was lucky enough, just when I arrived, I have a Leica with a 19, uh, uh, El Marit on it. And look, I have in this picture the three mood in a prison. In a, in a prison, you have the rebel. 
You have the people who said they want the revenge. They, 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 they shite all the time, they make noise, and they are there, of course. They did nothing, nobody. Then you have the people praying. A lot of Bible, a lot of uh, Koran, of course, in a prison. And you have the mass of the people who are abandoning. They don't know when they are there, they, 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 why they are there, they don't know when they will go to justice, why they are, what is the accusation, they don't even know the name of their lawyer. And um, in one picture I have this mood, and I, lost, I, I sold a lot of uh, this picture to many, many magazines. Uh, and this is one cell in the Tom prison. The, the prison don't exist anymore. This is an old Sparky in um, <coughs> Sing Sing. The, the electric chair stopped working in Sing Sing in 63. And I did this in uh, uh, 67. This is the first picture I had in a, a Paris match. And this is how I started to work with an agency in Europe. Uh, I read in the New York Times that uh, in a prison in Arkansas, they found 250 a body buried uh, of prisoners that they believe escaped, but they were killed by their trustee. So it was a tragic story. I, I took a plane, I arrived, I saw Winthrop Rockefeller, the brother of David and Nelson, and he was uh, at this moment uh, the governor of Arkansas. He gave me the permission to spend a day with, uh, in the prison. And uh, I found the, the trustee. This is where they were digging the bodies. And all the day long, it was a farm. It is a farm, Queen's farm still exists. And it's a farm, a huge farm. And they were collecting cotton at this moment. This is the tower. You see the, the guard. They don't lose their eyes on the prisoner, even when they have to sit a few minutes. And they started to have a fight on the right. And I managed to escape because the, the, uh, the guard wanted to take my, my, my film. And uh, I left. And the warden was very, very nice. The warden was Mr. Uh, Tom Merton. And, uh, he did a book, and with this book, probably you have seen the movie called Brew Baker. That was a story of that prison, and they did it and using my picture for the, the costume and the layout of the, uh, the scenery. Martin Luther King, that was in front of the, the uh, United Nations. Uh, for the technician here, it's a Leica 135 millimeter Hector. And you can see the, how clean and how sharp this lens is. We can see the United Nation in his eyes. Uh, it is as his funeral. All the mother wanted the kids to bend over and see him to remember his face. And uh, Loretta King did exactly the same thing with the kid. I started the campaign, of course, with uh, Bob Kennedy. He's in Brooklyn. And this is his funeral, a few months later, with Jackie and the kids at, in Arlington. 10th anniversary of uh, GFK death in Arlington. And that's the happiest uh, story I cover in the United States. This is when the United States took a revenge on the Russian. This is the departure of Apollo 11. So forget about Gagarin, forget about uh, Laika, the little dog, forget about uh, Sputnik. Here we go to the moon. Go, go, go. And I decided to have the rocket behind me, not to see the rocket. The rocket is nothing else than the a piece of smoke, and that's it. But look at the people. I, I photograph in the little creek. I was on the little step ladder that I will show you at the end of the book. And 
I photographed the creek like that, so I, my, my, my picture were used by so many magazines because slow, I take picture of all the emotion and each time I had a piece of the crowd. Another, you see, another crowd and everybody was shouting, go, go, go. I still hear it. And a few days later, this is in uh, Broadway with the astronaut. Coming back. Happy day, happy days. Happy days also in Watkins Glen. Uh, this is the largest rock festival ever in the United States. Was everybody said one million, some others said 1.3. And um, actually, Wikipedia said on the east coast of United States, one kid of seven teenager was in Watkins Glen. So if you want to make a judgment, it is extraordinary moment of the rock festival. And uh, the first uh, uh, woman equality march, the first strike with Betty Freedom, I had I admire very much. I photographed her many, many, many times. What a great lady. March on Fifth Avenue. And here on the right, you see the, the woman trying to be free from her husband. She's throwing her wedding <coughs> ring in the garbage to find the liberty. The last day of the AT&T operator. Hello, operator, may I help you? You know the 411 we had? Not anymore. It finished. This was the last day of those women. And this is in Copertino, the SE, the Macintosh, I'm sorry, on the assembly line. Woman in the army arrived there, and this is the first day. The first day in Fort Dix, they give him the helmet with a gas mask, and they go through a gas chamber. And uh, it's funny because you can see on, the, on this picture, you have the eyelashes, you have the, the long nail, and those women start to be sold there. They, they arrive this way. The first gay pride, the first day of the first gay pride, that was July uh, 17. That was the second day of Pride, the year after. And in San Francisco, in 82, the, the city, the mayor was gay. The, uh, this is the, the Gay Olympic. The, the team of the Scotland arrived. I don't know if they are really from Scotland, but they, they were equipped. And the winner had a good time with the sister of the perpetual indulgence. Uh, um, this, this man that you see in a sister, I have a great admiration for them because they are lawyers, they are doctors, they are architects, they are really leaders in San Francisco. And at night, they play in a theater and they collect the money and they give it to the, the, the gay community with AIDS. And this is a Rajnish, it's a sect in uh, Oregon. They don't exist anymore. Uh, they have difficulty with the justice. This is their guru. He had 70 Rolls Royce. He was making a tour of the, the village each day with a different Rolls Royce. And this is the weekend, which is the celebration of the Black Mass in Brooklyn. You remember the Pentagon Papers with Daniel Ellsberg, who told everybody, and of course, the New York Times uh, published all these papers um, about the Agent Orange and what's happening really in Vietnam. It was very important at that time. And the New York Times, this is the way they, <laughs> they were doing the New York Times, that with a lot of noise all the night, and they had eight editions a day. I was in Guam in 1972. Um, all these bombs going to Hanoi. A uh, lot of deaths in this country too. That is Arlington. 
protest in Yale. They were looking at the an helicopter, a police helicopter above me. And uh, after the massacre of the Kent State, you remember the death when the, um, the National Guard fortunately shot uh, those students. So it was 150,000 people arrived in Washington, D.C., and they invaded all the, the basin, all the pools in front of the Lincoln Memorial, the Washington Memorial. It was a heavy day of protest. The star of the day at that time, Abby Hoffman and Jan Fonda. And uh, in 71, in December, just uh, after Christmas, a bunch of uh, veterans took the Statue of Liberty with, uh, uh, and they removed the guard, they had weapons, and they have dynamite. And they wanted to explode the Statue of Liberty. And uh, during two days, it was quite tense. You know, the FBI was all over. And uh, I managed to be next to a door and talking to them. I said, I am a veteran. They said, OK, you are a veteran of what? I said, I was in the Algerian war. So OK, come on, come on. So I spent all the night with them over there. And I did a lot of pictures of what's happening inside. But uh, fortunately, they were talking to a uh, reasonable person, and uh, they did not blow the statue. This is a cover of my book, which is a, a very uh, strange photo, but I have to explain to you, it was uh, in Miami. It was uh, in 1972. It was in August during the Republican convention when the Nixon uh, was uh, uh, campaigning. and. Um, a lot of these young people protested because of the draft system, which was a lottery to go to the Vietnam. So one uh, go in, that, in this community, in this building, one young man goes in Vietnam, but the neighbor don't go in Vietnam because of the lottery. He was lucky enough not to go. So it was really an injustice. And a lot of them were protesting against that. And this is in my book. This is the same thing. This is those young men pretended to be a patient, to be a VC, to be death person in Vietnam and killed by the American bomb. What a gate, a very important moment in this moment. This is when, at this moment, they, they identified that uh, Nixon knew about the tape, of course, and uh, they decided the impeachment of Nixon just there. The last day, I arrived at the White House, where I was um, a correspondent for six years. And uh, I was surprised to see this, the last day of Nixon, on the, on the gate of the White House. And the farewell speech. And then I followed the president. Instead of going to the uh, room, to the Oval Office, where Jerry Ford was supposed to be, uh, I mean, he was swearing in, I did not want to photograph that because a swear in, you know, everybody has the same picture. But I wanted to follow Nixon um, the last minute when he passed in front of the butler that you see on the right of the, the White House to see the chef on the, the bottom. You have the people taking care of their room. And I must say it was a moving moment. A lot of people were crying. And I follow up to the helicopter. You can eventually see the hand of Nixon saying goodbye and those people losing their hat. And uh, I prefer this picture, raise it at uh, Jerry Ford swearing in, that I receive anyway free because I was correspondent and I, I was part of the pool. The Attica, the, when the, <coughs> the prisoner were killed, uh, once again was an, another Rockefeller, uh, Nelson in this, now involved. Uh, he sent the National Guard and unfortunately to liberate uh, the Guardian and the guard, uh, they have to, to kill so, so many prisoners. 
So this is a funeral in Brooklyn. Angela Davis in, uh, Washington, in uh, Madison Square Garden. Same Madison Square Garden, um, Muhammad Ali, uh, again Joe Fraser. And unfortunately, uh, I was not able to come in because I was a correspondent, foreign correspondent of a French agency and not specialized in sport. So I stay outside and I could not get in. But of course, I had the pool. I have six, seven pictures for the next, the next morning of the fight. But I did those pictures of the people coming in. And once again, was never published, but my wife here found those pictures, found them really remarkable for the, the outfit and a lot of people extremely rich coming from Harlem, especially, and coming into Madison Square Garden that night. And I'm going to show you now a picture, quite strange, but <clears throat> maybe in the audience you, you remember uh, a few years ago, the movie called American Gangster uh, with Denzel Washington and Russell Crowe. And uh, Denzel, American, uh, uh, the gangster was really this man, Frank Lucas. And when I photographed this that night, I did not know who he was. I was just there taking picture, waiting for Sinatra, who never came by that door, by the way. And uh, he had a $250,000 chinchilla coat. The hat itself is $60,000. And next to me, probably, was a man that play with by uh, Russell Crowe in a movie. He's an arc agent, and at that time, uh, a lot of young people were dying in New Jersey and Harlem because they had pure heroin. They have all the do overdose, and the French and the Italian selling their heroin was 30% mixed, but they were received the heroin 100% recently after the, ma or <coughs> the moment of the match. And they realized that this man, seated at the few thousand dollars row front seat, check hand with Frank Sinatra. So the narc agent said, who is this guy? And it took him three years and he put him in jail for 70 years. And he is a man who imported the drugs in the coffin of the dead body, the dead American Marine coming back by uh, the Air Force. And uh, in there, each coffin has a 50 pound of heroin. And uh, this is a lucky moment for a photographer. But unfortunately, I found this picture only a few months ago. <laughs> and I'm, because a friend of mine said, oh, you photographed that night of the fight, but do you know American Gangster? I said, no, I did not see the movie, no. So I, we rented the movie, and my wife at 6 a.m. in the morning, excited, came to the office, look at the contact sheet, and find Frank Lucas. <laughs> We were invited, and my wife was there, by the way. Uh, uh, we were invited to the burning cross of the KKK. Why did I photograph that? Because at that time, I was doing pictures of a story on the farmers uh, all over the all over United States. All over, I was touched. I was deeply sad by the reposition of all these farms by the bank. And uh, of course, in each place, when they had a, a problem with the farmers, the KKK was there. So finally, those people knew me and said, hey, they called me JP very quickly, the French guy. And he said, do you want to come and in Louisiana? We invite you for the burning of the cross. You're a journalist. You cannot say no. So this is it. And after the burning, look, we, we had the, the sandwich. I think it's a funny picture. But to stay right, don't forget, in Virginia, you have also uh, the White National Socialist Party, which still exists. And those people here celebrate the Lincoln birthday each year. 
You see the, the black people with a cigar, just, you know, the opposite, mocking them, you know, so don't care about uh, the, the vastica and uh, what's happening. But this is it, it's still there. Making the dollar, you have, uh, today the photographer has difficulty to do the same picture because you still have the cat uh, walk uh, for everybody. But to be on the floor like that, you don't go anymore. So this man on the right has one, at that time, one billion point two dollars in a ten dollar bill. The first day uh, of the, we, we did not take advantage, we did not know in the United States, uh, we came late to the ecology system and understand the pollution. Uh, Europe came very first, and now Asia tried to awake. But uh, we were, I was so happy to be in 70 to the first day of the earthquake day in the New York. And uh, when the gas went up, yes, in 73, it was 35 cents the gallon. And um, <coughs> you know the price now, but it's going down, hopefully. And everybody wanted to buy a Volkswagen because the Japanese came two years later. The first to react was uh, prepared with their boat and with uh, the importation of the, the car was immediately with uh, uh, feet for United States Highway, the Volkswagen, everybody had a Volkswagen. And it was during the, the shortage of gasoline in New York, uh, maybe some of you, you remember, we had 10 gallon to our pump a, a week. And this is the people on the West Side Highway that you see we, without plowing, because the machine, the, the, the sanitation could not plow them. They don't have gasoline enough to plow the, 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 the snow. So the people went taking out of the West Side Highway and going with a Riverside Drive there, straight. A lot of people uh, with Volkswagen, as you see, and a lot of car could not move and stay there for days without gasoline. In 77 in Georgia, this is the moment of uh, Carter. And I wanted to know where Carter came from. And Carter came from Plain, Georgia. It's a very small village next to America's Georgia. And uh, I photograph, probably this is the poorest American that I photograph. Uh, in these pictures, you have the family. They live about 100 feet from Mrs. Carter. Miss Carter, they called the, the mother of, uh, of uh, Carter, of the President Carter, of Jimmy. And they don't have even a shelf. They have nail. They put a nail in the wall, and they have a little bag where they put their belongings. Fortunately, she has a little field to collect the, the cotton once a year. A lot of poor people. And the young, after working in the crop for six months, they have no job. So they play pool and drink beer and do nothing. And the black go to the black haired dresser and the, the white go to their church, the black go to their church. Fortunately, uh, they live together. They, they don't have some fight that we have seen recently, but uh, still the segregation is unbelievable. I'm so sorry. Um, Atlantic Monthly, Atlantic Monthly never, never ran photos. And uh, <coughs> one day they called me and they said, we want you, you are an immigrant in this country. We want you to do a story on the immigra immigration. And we want to run the photos for the first time in our magazine. So for three months, I photographed the Korean, the Chinese, the Haitian, uh, name it. Uh, the, the, I photographed them all, all community. And of course, the Mexican that I want to show you here that uh, was inside of their magazine. They did, I don't know, 30 or 40 page of photos on my story. And uh, I am on the United States side, of course, and uh, you have the hand of a Mexican on my right. 
On the right, it is Mexico. On the left, uh, it is California. And these people are Mexican coming in the United States. They cross the Rio Grande near Del Rio in Texas. And there is no guard, there is no police, there is nothing there because they can go nowhere. When they arrive in a city, they sell their blood, they work in a gas station or they clean the dishes, and at night they go back to Mexico and they come back the next day. This is a very serious, for me, a very serious problem. It is uh, the kid and the gun. You have this problem in the newspaper at least each two or three months. and. Uh, in Texas, to be a good Texas boy or girl, you have to know how to ride a horse and to shoot a gun. But why to put a, such a big gun in a small hand, that I don't understand. Detroit during the Depression in 1980, the first time that Detroit was down, no car for sale, um, the engineer were fired, was very sad, and I spent a couple of weeks there. This is uh, the people making cars, and they were at the inside of the place where they, they have one, one lunch a day, and they, they have a bed. It was very sad. That's a farmer. This is what I told you. I was working with a farmer a lot. And this man has no gasoline, so he, he worked with his horse again. He has no more gasoline for his old truck. This is in Arkansas. Abundant farms and the reposition of the, the farm and uh, selling their uh, equipment to the neighbor, of course. That was dramatic. This is also in Arkansas. This is the same family. Uh, the man is a log man. And this is inside of the house on the right and on the left, the same people, the same family on the left, on their porch. Statue of the Liberty in jail. That was the French uh, working on the renovation of the statue in 76, that was probably in 75, it took two years to do it, and a few million dollars. Moment of happiness, the 200 years of the statue. No, I'm sorry, 200 years of United States. <laughs> I'm sorry. And uh, Verrazano, <coughs> by the way, that's the only bridge I have seen new since I arrived in this country in 65. Uh, I'm surprised that England, is no more an island. We have a 32 tunnel, 32 miles tunnel. Uh, the Italian and the Swiss and the French, they dig under the Alps and they did three tunnels for the train and the trucks and the cars. And here we did the end of the Verrazzano, not even another tunnel to cross the Hudson or to go in Brooklyn. And I don't understand this. I don't understand with the technology we have, we could make a tunnel in about four months where the money goes of the toll. I'm, I'm still looking for it. <laughs> yeah. And at the end of the marathon, space people, Club 54. And that's a funny moment. This is. You, you, you have seen my lens. I am not taking pictures too much with a fisheye or the wide angle. But this one is a fisheye. I was doing a story on Radio Shack. Matter of fact, I learned very sadly that Radio Shack will have only two stores in New York. One in 34th Street and one in 125th Street. In my street, West 72, they are closing this week. So I was doing for Radio Shack a book on the CB 
uh, it was a moment where the truck driver was looking for the gasoline and they were calling each other, hello, what is over your shoulder, what's your 20, and where are the bear? And what was a strange <laughs> language, and I went over there with a truck for a month, and I passed in front of this, and I did not know. It was a piece of art, it was a Cadillac ranch, uh, it was made by an artist who put this Cadillac uh, proudly in the air with their tails up. And uh, I did this with a, with a, uh, a, a fisheye, and I sold a lot of this picture, a lot. And they moved the Cadillac, by the way, 10 miles away <laughs> for the moon. Uh, this is one of the most difficult assignments I had. Uh, I, I work with a, all the book, about 20 of them, the one day in the life of Canada, Spain, Italy, Japan, uh, and for United States, they gave me an assignment to photograph the Mont Rushmore. And they said, okay, JP, I'm sure you are going to do an original picture and uh, we count on you. And uh, I, I arrive in Rapid City, as you know, it's a capital there. You arrive at, at, the, at the airport, you have the best picture of the, of the Mont Rushmore. The best picture, the best postcard, the, with a long lens, with a taking picture at night, picture from the plane. The, you, you cannot, how can I'm going to do, how to do a picture, uh, an original picture. Anyway, I managed to go on the top of the head, just like the Hitchcock uh, movie, and I took this picture, and they put in this picture in the book. So I was very happy, I was one page, was okay original picture, but I did this picture and they did not want to run this picture. <laughs> this picture, I don't know who are they, uh, it's a couple, it was a man and a woman, probably a husband and a wife, maybe a brother or sister, I don't know, and they bought these masks, I don't know where, and I, I put them, of course, I staged the picture, of course I staged the picture, and, but uh, they did not put it in the book. In the <laughs> I like it very much. Uh, happy day for a journalist. Uh, somebody knocked at the door, a couple of guys, uh, day before, and said, OK, tomorrow we are going to jump from the Empire State Building. We never did it. It was never, been, never done, because Empire State Building is uh, pyramid shaped. So it is difficult to, to, to jump from, from, the, from this. And you have, you have balcony uh, to avoid. So uh, they said, you want it or not, we'll jump. And uh, they, why they came to my agency in New York to do that? Because we photographed them uh, a year ago, a year before from the Eiffel Tower. So I put a photographer on top of the Empire State Building with a walkie talkie. I was down the, there. I had my camera and my guy said, okay, they're jumping, they're jumping up. So I have the time to take three pictures because I had no motor drive. And uh, of course, they were arrested when they arrived on Fifth Avenue. <laughs> uh, and on the right, this is uh, during the construction of the building where you have this ball now going down for the, the, the night of the New Year's Eve. It was really impressed to see the Superman there. <laughs> this is how I photographed the, the creek of the departure of Apollo 11. I told you, so I was photographed by David Burnett, a well-known photographer. And you know, at this time, we did not have one camera with a zoom, and uh, we could do black and white in color in the same time, and autofocus. So we had to have four or five camera. Plus, you have to, time to reload. That, when I was in Washington, and this is, my wife and I in our uh, uh, Elian, Elian, <laughs> right here. <laughs> and I was lucky enough to have a, a good uh, a wife, a good editor uh, as a wife. And look at the picture we, we did. We, we, put, we picked the picture of the book among about a few ten of thousands of pictures. And this is it. If you have any question, it's time. 
Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, BNH has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.